All righty then. Welcome, 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 and happy Thursday, I believe it is. It is Thursday, yes. Um, I'm Ross, and I appreciate you all joining me today. Give me about 30 more seconds, and we'll let a few more people pop on. Then we will get this show on the road, because if anything, we like to be prompt and uh, conscious of your time. All right, well, we'll say that 30 seconds is up. So anyway, welcome. Uh, I'm Ross Allen. I'm one of the senior account managers here at ScanCo, which is just a nice way of uh, the title they gave me. It's, it's better than saying the old guy sales guy. But anyway, um, that is an older picture of me. I have a lot more gray hair than that, but I call those babble scars. Anyway, welcome. I appreciate you all joining us as part of our, our monthly Lunch and Learn series that we do here at ScanCo. Uh, every month, usually towards the end of the month, uh, usually the th uh, second to last Thursday, uh, or sometimes the last Thursday of the month, we will do a Lunch and Learn webinar that uh, varying topics. Uh, we started off in January with how to improve from the manufacturing side, manufacturing process improvements with our, our latest procurement product, SPA, our production management plus. Um, you know, we just did one last month with Seth. He hosted on advanced shipping. Today, we're gonna be focusing on Warehouse 100 uh, mainly. Um, there's gonna be some tips and tricks on the back end that kind of really uh, branch across our multi-bin product as well and our manufacturing. Um, but we also love doing webinars with our partners. If we have any partners on the call today, do know that we do, we love to do specific partner uh, focused webinars. I just did one yesterday that was helping uh, customers navigate uh, between bill of materials, uh, production management, and operations management job ops. Where do you go with that? So it was a great one to, to help with. So we love kind of focusing on those things. So we'll go ahead and get started. As I mentioned, we do these every month and we have 30 minutes and we're gonna get through as much as we can in those 30 minutes and hopefully get to your questions. Uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, you should see a little uh, thing that says questions. Do pop them in there and if we have time, we will get to them. If not, the great thing about the, uh, the technologies, I log all those and I have access to them and can reach out to you individually. So for those who have never heard about ScanCo and you've been living underneath a rock, um, we have been in business for about 35 years now and counting, and we are a warehouse management, uh, operations management, manufacturing and management uh, software vendor with Sage. We're an ISV, we plug into Sage 100, 500, 300, and intact. Uh, today's focus is always gonna be mainly on the, the bread and butter of Sage, which is 100, however, we across all, all, uh, all the rest of the, the tiers there. Again, 100, three, five, and intact. Um, anyway, we've been doing this quite some time. We're based out of Sarasota, Florida. Originally, we started in Akron, Ohio, but I guess the owners of the company figured that Florida was a lot nicer and warmer uh, to be with down here. Um, so we do have a lot of Florida-based customers, um, and we all love visiting and getting out there. So um, if you're in the area, stop by and see us, or we'll stop by and see you. Uh, so ScanCo is a bolt-in directly into Sage. Um, we kind of cover three main, or four main pieces. We have our WMS system, which is our multi-bin system, which lives directly inside of Sage and enhances Sage from within inside of Sage. And the rest of our products uh, talk directly to Sage, whether we're looking at our warehouse management automation, our manufacturing, uh, which bolts in for production management or operations management. We have light manufacturing, uh, bill of materials in our warehouse piece. And then we also have a complete mobile uh, sales and field service applications as well. Um, we've been doing this for quite some time and, and love the Sage partnership and working with customers and. I love what I do because what's more unique than anything about what we do uh, is I we have so many different customers of shapes and sizes from potato chips to microchips to you know, uh, uh, you know petroleum devices to uh, lubricants in the petroleum world to everything else. So we we cross all bridges and it's always cool to see what uh, what customers are running to next. So a little bit about me. I figured it's always good to know the guy on the phone. Uh, that you talk to, and I always like to hear about other people as well, but I have been with ScanCo, this is my 11th year now, so I started in 2012 when Tess and Sean uh, Boros took over the company. Uh, I have a wife and a daughter and a dog, yeah, that's the one at the bottom, He's that's Liam. Uh, Liam uh, comes to work quite often, he's a 13-year-old Yorkie who thinks he's much younger than that, um, really cool dog. As you can see, I play the bagpipes, yes, that is a great icebreaker, I've been doing that for about 30 plus years now. I was very busy on St. Patrick's Day, but I do it all year round for uh, as a semi-professional basis with churches and weddings and funerals and bat mitzvahs and everything else in between. Love trivia, uh, big into cooking. I'm an avid bourbon drinker. Um, 
uh, love working on house projects, writing. I'm a big classic rock fan. So anything from Led Zeppelin, DC to Rush, I got it. And then I love dad jokes. The, I'm kind of known around the office for that. I have a horrible sense of humor. My daughter, I embarrass her all the time, um, but she loves it. In fact, dad jokes have become so popular. Uh, they recently did a study, uh, the British, uh, what was it? The British Psychological Study um, did a study that dad jokes actually help children become better adults because it's taught them that it's okay to be embarrassed and not freak out about things. So true study, look it up, just go to the Google and type in dad joke study and it's a real thing. So I am proud to be part of that. Um, so anyway, we'll go ahead and get moving on to this. Uh, like I said, we do this every month. Um, by the way, next month, I encourage you to, to register. We'll, we put out the registration link probably the first week of April in our newsletter. We have a really cool webinar coming up at the, uh, in, in April. Uh, it's really customer centric and I think you're really gonna like it. It's something unique that we've never done before and it's, it's gonna be awesome, the showstopper. So please sign up. So when it comes to tips, there's a lot of different things that we, we could kind of uh, talk about. So the trips portion is some unique things that we have within our Stanco application. Uh, but the tip side of it is something that we uh, hear a lot of from our customer base of, hey, you know, we've grown, we, can we do better? What do you suggest from a daily operation standpoint uh, from a software perspective, how can, how can we be better? So we always encourage, and I will show you where to find some of these things when we get to the demo portion, uh, that your software is always up to date. Okay, so that's really from a application standpoint. So that's our warehouse application, our sales application, and our manufacturing application. Um, when it comes to our multi-bin and other pieces like that that live within inside of Sage, um, obviously those are product update releases and that's part of the Sage piece. But just like with any other app that's on your phone today, we constantly release uh, updates, uh, bug fixes, enhancements throughout the year, uh, generally on a quarterly basis, um, sometimes a little bit sooner than that but I will show you where to find all those things. So we have a piece of software called Connect It. So any of our mobile applications, uh, our customers today know that software Connect It lives on your Sage server as a Windows service. And there is some self-help that you guys can do to actually update those and keep up to date on it. Um, so we'll show you where to find those because many of you don't know where to find it and we will show you where to find that today. Um, we do recommend that you know we are a smart device application. Um, we work on iOS, Android, and Windows, which I'll show you how to access that here shortly as well. Um, but from an iOS and Android perspective, we are a smart application. But we do recommend closing any of the other apps, TikToks or Instagrams or whatever anybody else is on the floor with. In fact, that's another tip right there is if you are using uh, scanners because they are smart devices, I would put parental controls. Yes, parental controls for your employees. It does sound kind of funny, but big help because that way people are singularly focused on the application itself, but it does make things run much faster and much better. Um, I will show you how to create unique logins for each of your employees. It helps you not only gain better insight in their usage and performance, but also locking them down in the transactions that you wish them to. Uh, training is a big thing. And this is one thing that we hear on a continual basis. And this isn't just training uh, for someone that's new to ScanCo and is just onboarding. This is kind of a continuing education thing. Um, and it really focuses on, uh, you know, growth in your industry. Let's say your, your business has grown the last couple of years, you expand it out, you've been using our multi-bin product for, I see this all the time, um, our customers that have multi-bin, for instance, have had it for a while or warehouse, and they've been only using it for just a small, just fraction of what they really can do with it. Um, so we'll get into kind of where you can actually grow some of those out. And we have a complete LMS system, a learning management system, which we'll show you how to access today as well that you can get a subscription to. I'll show you how to access our knowledge base today too, if you did not know where to find that. And we also have a whole professional services division that does help with uh, a continuing education. Uh, we, you know, and also we rely slowly, you know, focus on your Sage reseller as well as another avenue and resource. And then lastly, you know, we're talking about enhancements and training and testing, uh, test, test, test. So you're looking at me like, Ross, you spelled test wrong three times, in fact. No, I did not. This is a little sage humor. You know that in sage company codes, you can only have three characters. So every company that we ever deal with, we encourage them to set up a test company, normally TST, hence the test, test, test. So thank you for, uh, you know, humoring me with that. So anyway, so those are our biggest pieces that we recommend. I'll show you how to focus on those because all of our software, whether it's our warehouse, manufacturing, or our multi-bin, is all multi-company, multi-warehouse. So it's easily to kind of navigate and flip back and forth between and test and focus on those. 
So some of the fun trick things that we have. So we're constantly adding in uh, enhancements to our products uh, that we have gotten either suggestions from our partners, our customer base. We love hearing suggestions from you to make our process and software better. Now, sometimes it's a one-off as a custom modification, which we have full ability to do as well. Uh, but a lot of times too, something you you come to us and you're like, gosh, that just makes sense. Why don't we think of it? So now we added a part of that. So one of the cool, unique things is photo capture. Um, I demo this all the time and I'm surprised how popular it really is. Actually, I'm not surprised, but how widely used actually it is. So to kind of give you an idea of photo capture, why do we do that? Well, if you, you know, if you're in the world of distribution or anything or manufacturing, even product comes in and product goes out. So the product that comes in, if it's damaged or something happens to it, you need to take a photo of it, some sort of photo log. So what do you do? You whip out your phone, get you out your tablet. No one has an actual camera laying around anymore, but you have to then send it, store it somewhere. So, but that's another step you have to do and remember where to do it. Um, we've also had customers on the shipping aspect that have installed security cameras on the floor and every product that goes out, they have to hold the package up to the security camera for like 15 seconds to capture it. And then they store that for like 60 days in case they ever got a recall or a customer said something was damaged. They can go back and find out when it was shipped, who did it and everything. Well, no more do you have to go to like five different steps. Everything's within our application. So we have a photo capture that's built into receiving, shipping, and picking. Order assignments, another big thing. So gone are the days, or at least we hope gone are the days, of the manual heavy paper process of printing that paper. And this is the new green initiative from Scanco, but really it's to save you guys a lot of hassle of being able to uh, uh, print out uh, pick sheets or order sheets or you know receipt sheets or purchase orders and then go put them in all these different wire baskets in the warehouse. So if you've been using our product and or have not yet, I'll show you where to do order assignments from our dashboard. It lets you assign up orders for receiving, picking, shipping, and wave batch as well. But if we have time, we'll touch on that in just a little bit of what that is. Metrics are a big thing too in the world of uh, distribution and manufacturing. KPIs, uh, key performance indicators is the fancy term for it. Um, there's a new uh, terminology that's been around for a little while now in the world of uh, warehousing called pay for play um, or pay for performance. And this is a great way to bonus employees or pay employees based on how well that they do from a shipping perspective or receiving perspective and accuracy. So we have a whole back end that tracks all these metrics uh, that you can utilize and export out to spreadsheets and everything else uh, for storage purposes and for tracking purposes as well. We do have messaging. Uh, gone are the days of people picking up the phone nowadays and every, no, one, no one calls anybody anymore. Everyone texts, right? So we actually have built-in messaging, peer-to-peer uh, -peer or uh, dashboard-to-peer, in this case like an operations manager, to communicate to people on the floor. It streamlines communication. It's a great way to take selfies of your employees on the floor. I'm kidding, but pictures do take there as well. Um, and allowing for group messaging uh, you know, included. So it's a great way for easy communication. Gone are the days of picking up the phone, paging someone, they have to stop what they're doing and go to the front when you can just communicate to them via that way. And fun fact, if you guys, anybody that is using any Zebra scanners out there now, any of the newer TC series, the 21, the 50 series, the 70 series, they all have the built-in uh, push to talk uh, series. If you remember the old Nextel phones, the push to talk walkie talkies, that's built into all Zebra devices for the most part now too. So it's an easy way to communicate that way as well. And speaking of hardware, um, I did not put this on the list, but as a Zebra partner, um, we have the ability to actually get demo devices on a regular basis for my employees or for our customers to test out. So I have many new customers that we're onboarding that you know, hardware is, software is an investment of one side, but hardware is another big investment altogether. Um, and there's all, all kinds of different scanners, long range ones, if you need to scan 30 to 40 feet up in the rack or long distance, um, if, you know, intrinsically safe ones, if you're around uh, fireworks or, or explosives, uh, and then freezer based ones too, if you're in cold storage. So there's a whole host of different devices out there. And before buying it and being like, you know what, I'm not really a big fan of it, hit me up. Uh, my email contact will be at the end of this, or you can just email sales at scanco.com, but we can actually get demo devices from our, our Zebra partners, including printers, uh, for you to test for a couple of weeks to see what you like and how you like it. Uh, it's a great way to test the, the, the hardware before purchasing. Um, focusing on the next uh, couple of tricks that we have, aliasing the measure. So some of these uh, are built on the back end. I'll show you where you can find some information on it, and some are 
immediately within our application. So aliasing the measure is something that we came up quite some time ago, where for our customers that are selling in case packs, master packs, and uh, each is individuals, right? So if I'm you know, selling chlorine, I can sell chlorine in a master pack, I can sell it as a, a individual case, or I can sell it as an each. And it's always the same chlorine, um, but there's different barcodes on the outside, the inside, and on the product itself. So with our product enhancement, aliasing the measure, which basically takes the alias functionality within Sage today as a standard function, we enhance that by allowing you to have different alias item code. So for instance, chlorine can be C-M for a master pack, and C-M equals 12 bottles. And then C-C for a case equals five bottles, and then C-E could be, each could be one bottle. So every time you scan that different barcode, it's gonna register back in Sage, and we convert the quantity scan to the quantity of each is on the back end. So we do all the math for you, you don't have to worry about it, but that's a unique thing that we have on the back end that is quite popular for all my customers that are selling same product in just different quantities. Because um, Sage only limits you to three, right? Purchase order standard and sales. We enhance that to a lot more than that. Uh, bin changes. So this is not the world of multi-bin. So not everyone is ready for multi-bin or needs our multi-bin product. Uh, quick side note, what is multi-bin? So standard Sage today allows you to have a single named bin location through reorder point within inventory management for a single item in a single warehouse. Great. But what if I have a 100,000 square foot warehouse and I have all these different racks and locations and I want my product to be in everything? That's where a multi-bin comes into play. So we allow multiple bin locations from receiving to shipping to whip uh, to anything you can think of. Think of Ikea, just on a bigger scale, of the named bin locations you can have. So for my customers that aren't quite ready for that, that are using the reorder point, we found a long time ago that uh, a lot of times they want to change the name of the location that the item is in without having to go into Sage. So we allow that from item inquiry. If you are a non multi bin customer and you have Scanco Warehouse, you can simply just click on the bin location prompt or the primary location prompt and update it and it will update the reorder point in Sage. GS1 HIBCC, what is that? Well, in anybody in the medical and food industry, um, and I'll show you where to access this information as well, uh, uses a standard, it's what GS1 or government standard barcode within the industry. So basically it's a fancy compound barcode that has different uh, leading characters and identifiers that break up what's the item code, what's the lot, what's the quantity, what's the serial. And that's big in the industry because standardization is huge in medical and food. Um, and a lot of my customers that are needing to do that for FDA purposes, for instance, um, want to keep the same barcode that comes in from their vendors and manufacturers as it goes out the door without having to change everything. Well, our software innately out of the box has been doing that for a number of years now. Um, so if that's something that has interest and when I show you the screenshots of what that looks like and that's something you do utilize today, let us know and we'll help you get there. Auto post, another big thing. So all of our software, our warehouse collection, our data collection, all is in real time with Sage but we don't actually still post the transaction that still has to be manually done, which is a preference for a lot of uh, the controllers and bookkeepers or CFOs at an organization. However, it's nice to have quick real-time transactions as well. So we have an auto post enhancement that does auto posting of receipt of goods and then inventory transactions. So that's issues, that's uh, transfers. So warehouse to warehouse, bin to bin post in real time anyway with our multi-bin product warehouse to warehouse and inventory receipts as well. And we also have adjustments that can post in real time. So all those transactions will post. It's part of our uh, barcode or mobility for barcode import enhancement that we have. If that is of interest, let us know. That's something we can discuss as well. Uh, you do have the ability to turn on and off uh, for receipt of goods or inventory transactions. You can have it on for both. And lastly, uh, packless printing. So we've gone to this entire point. We've automated everything but you still have to walk over to a printer and then, or Sage and print out a pack list, which can be kind of a cumbersome thing. So for, you know, for a while now, we've also had an auto pack list printing enhancement. We have label printing, but now we have pack list printing. So as soon as you go through shipping data entry on the handheld, you hit the send, it goes right into Sage and it automates and prints out the pack list that is set up in Sage already to whatever printer that's on your network. And we even have it to where it can be based on the user that's logged in and based on the user, they can have the printer that they're closest to. So it's all settings in the back end, but we have that as well. So let's get into some of the, 
excuse me, some of the demo applications. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my uh, demo environment. And why we're doing that. I am going to go over one more thing. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to go over, here's my contact information. If you need anything, uh, Ross at scanco.com, very simple. My direct line is right there, which also goes to my cell phone. So feel free to reach out to me there as well. And then kind of going back to the alias pieces that we talked about, I did forget to mention uh, that alias entry is also a big piece during um, a receipt of goods too. So vendor aliases are also a, a big portion doing the receiving process. So I will, if we have time today, I will get into how you can actually create an alias in real time uh, from the handheld during the receiving process. So I apologize that my, my machine went to sleep. They get two seconds to boot up and we'll get the show on the road. While we're waiting, I will get to a couple of questions. Uh, Ross, you mentioned about hardware and how we can access that. So if you're interested in a demo device or demo printer, uh, let me know. Uh, just email me, ross at scanco.com, and I can go ahead and get it to, generally it takes about a week to get, depending on what the availability is, as well as what you're looking for. So Zebra has launched a whole brand new uh, line of tablets as well. So that's another big thing uh, for the industry. So if people are tired of, the standard handheld size and the tablets. Um, Zebra just launched those with full imagers built into them as well. Okay, we are back. So a couple things. Uh, we talked about updating. So within Scanco, if you have our Scanco and wherever your main server application is logged into, if you go into the search bar and start typing in remote, just the word remote, uh, you'll come to our remote connected utility. This is what this looks like. So this is actually gonna show you um, what connected version we have. So here's my most recent release, which we did uh, yesterday, 3.22.23. It's gonna show you that. And you actually have the ability to update your connected directly from here. It also tells you, and this is also where if you need a new installer or you need a new access to our dashboard, you can also download those from here. If you want to know where to access this from, if you go to our website and you go to installers.scanco.com, I know real original name, this is where we have all of our installers for all of our desktop applications, our manufacturing Android, our warehouse Android, and our iOS uh, test flight applications are all accessible from here. If you ever have any issues or concerns or how to access this, uh, email support at scanco.com. Feel free to CC me as well and we'll get you squared away. Going back to the profiles real quick. Um, so to access our knowledge base, if you access our, uh, if you have warehouse today or manufacturing, you go to customers.scanco.com, you click on the manuals tab in the top right hand corner, and you will come to our knowledge base. Our knowledge base has a whole host of articles on our modifications, our enhancements. And if I type in GS1 like I did here prior, you can scroll down and see everything that we have on GS1. So this is what a GS1 barcode looks like. So if you scan this, we can recognize the item code and we can bring in the lot without having to fill in the prompts individually. We break it down all for you immediately. So this is a great article on, if you're, again, food, medical, you do GS1 today, you don't have it with Scanco, uh, please access this, read through it. I can send it to you if you need it, and we will help you uh, figure that out. Our LMS system. So this goes back to continuing education. If I have uh, part-time employees um, that I'm uh, bringing on board or seasonal and I want to train them, we have a whole training website called training.scanco.com. You log in here, and this has videos and tutorials, a little bit different than our knowledge base. This is all course driven. Everything from Scanco sales to printing to our multi bin training, and it has either PDFs, uh, videos, click throughs. Um, we actually have some click through demos as well, and a course built into it for testing. So, um, from the dashboard perspective, let's talk about some of the new functionality that we have on the dashboard. So within the dashboard, this should look pretty simple to you guys today if you are using our dashboard. From a metrics standpoint, so we have a, a metrics tab that actually is graphical representations and that graphs out um, and everything's color coded. And if you click on each one, it actually will highlight the one you're focusing on. But for this, it's letting me know purchase order dates, how many purchase orders I have for each date. If I wanna see invoice dates or how many transfers that are broken down, you can access all this uh, here. You can actually show it via column, bar graph, pie graph, or donut graph. So this is metrics based on um, 
purchase orders, number of purchase orders, number of sales orders, some transactions within Sage that we pull through and graph out here. And you can filter any of those down uh, simply by clicking at the date columns down here and hitting apply filter or resetting it. From a metric standpoint of performance, uh, let's go to re uh, purchase orders real quick. There we go, we'll go to receiving. From a historical perspective, if I go to history, this is gonna show everything from a historical perspective of who did it, when they did it, what they did, and it date and time stamps everything. So that gives you always a start time and end time. The beauty of having this accessible data is you can print it out from here, or you can always export it to a spreadsheet for additional calculations and storage. Now the spreadsheet thing is big. The reason why I focus on this is I will tell you over time, because we're keeping track of your, your BC history, your barcode history within the database here. So as you're going through there, it's storing it and we're, we're storing in a whole database of it. So over time, uh, that, that BC tables, that database will fill up with data that does need, needs to be purged and cleared out. That's something our support team can help you do. It'll speed things up immensely. But so you don't lose the data, I recommend at least once a week, maybe on a Friday, going through here and exporting out to spreadsheets, the transactions that are important to you so you save those. I have a lot of customers that will do routine cycle counts uh, and, and delete the account out of Sage and store it here so they just kind of have an update of what was happening. Also built under our dashboard, as I mentioned, we have messaging utility, which is down here. So you can actually instant message back and forth between users. So if I bring up my handheld, here, you can actually instant message between users. So I have a desktop application as well as a, um, let's see here, there we go, desktop versus an actual iOS. And you can actually message back and forth. So users can uh, message user to user by clicking on messaging and you have the ability to click on, if I click on Ross and I hit okay, and you can actually message back and forth. And we do support emojis, so I can say hello. And the user will pick up on the raw side here. And the messages will pop up and I can go back and forth and there's my hello. We do support emojis, uh, which is always a popular thing as well. So we'll back out of here, back out, exit, perfect. So from an order assignment standpoint, this is another big factor is order assignment. So gone are the days of paper baskets I was telling you about or wire baskets. So if I click on the assign orders function, this is actually gonna pull up every order out of Sage for receiving, picking or shipping. So if I go to receiving, for instance, I'm gonna select 10049 and I'm gonna save it and hit save. And not only can you, as soon as it's saved, you can see the number of signed orders that are available, percentage, and you can actually see as it's being received in. On my handheld, I will have a number one show up above my truck. So if I go to the receiving truck and I go to buy order, I'll select my Sage batch if I'm working in a Sage batch and doing a lookup from my screen, you will see that every order listed out that's an open order that I can use is black. The one assigned to me goes to the very top of the list and it's now green. Once green, if I go ahead and plug in my number, and it says it's not recognized, not even as an alias, I can hit yes. I can actually scan and assign that alias number to my correct part number and hit send and confirm. And it actually will go back right to the receiving screen. So mid receipt, if your vendors change your uh, part numbers on you, you can go right back and go right back into receiving and create the alias on the fly. If I scan the right item, It'll then validate it or the alias. Now the photo prompt is pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a live photo. There's everyone, take it. I'm gonna use this photo. Once it's used, it'll see green. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, scan my correct item in. We also do support item images. This is another cool little feature. Uh, if you did not know about it, if you have item images inside of Sage already under the tab number two in inventory management, uh, you can actually add item images and we do pull those over on the handheld. Once I select my receiving bin to receive into, I'm gonna select my quantity and hit done. You'll see a, a little a blurb up here that the uh, item image went through and it actually is saved back in the mass 90 images folder. So if I click back on here, here's my image. We actually log 
the purchase order number, the date, and the Julian date, end date, and timestamp as well. So here's a photo that we just took. So all the photos that are taken during receiving, shipping, and picking are saved back to the Mass90 Images folder under the company code. So there's a lot more questions, there's a lot more tips and tricks that we have, but the biggest thing we added, like I said, is, is alias item right on the fly. We've gone over how to assign orders directly to the handheld, so we're saving on wire baskets and, and the hassle of having to sort through and getting paper cuts and all that good stuff. Uh, item images can be taken now directly from receipts, shipping and picking, all, all the picking options. And the other thing too is testing. So going back in the portal real quick, before we leave here, I did want to touch on that uh, within our software, you can have multiple different uh, profiles and unlimited number of profiles and user IDs. And we recommend creating a unique user ID based on the transaction and based on the profile. So if I go to my warehouse profiles, I have two. One for my default that I have access to and one for physical account. So when it comes time for a physical account, users can actually, you can log out and log in as a different user. So if I'm on my handheld and I log out of the application I'm in today, I can log back in and I will just have access to physical count and any other transactions you have. So I know I promise to get you out of here on time. We are at the 30 minute mark. I hope you enjoyed today as much as I did. Feel free to hit me up directly, call me, email me. Uh, we do have some extra questions that I will get to individually and personally and reach out to you. So thank you again and we will see you next month uh, for our next webinar. Have a good one.